Talk Terry. And thanks for joining us for another fantastic free episode of the Stories of the Century Western Television Show starring Jim Davis and Mary Castle. And it's all brought to you free here on the internet by westernsontheweb.com. Come on by and see us on westernsontheweb.com for hundreds of free Western television shows and movies and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Westerns on the Web. And we're getting our Facebook page started, so come on by and visit us on Facebook, Westerns on the Web on Facebook. Now here comes Stories of the Century. We'll see you after the show. newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Bert Alvord, one time deputy sheriff of Wilcox, Arizona, turned out to have a better talent for robbing trains and catching robbers. Before the law caught up with him at the turn of the century, he rated number one on the roll call of the great Southwest. at least 10 minutes on a siding waiting for the westbound. There it is, that car near the end. Stay here with that wagon until I call for you. Think we got enough? One more, and we'll have enough to floor for every ranch in southern Arizona. <laughs> you couldn't buy this much time the whole town will cost. Even if you could, the whole town would know about it. Get that wagon out of here. Couple of boxes of dynamite off the wagon, Billy. We'll take it with us. Beat it back to town and make sure folks know you're there. Store the rest of that dynamite in the warehouse and get some paint and fix those boxes so nobody will know what's in them. All right, get them out of here. Nice. Is that to make that lousy little dame come to terms, huh, Billy? Yeah. 
Captain. What are you scared about? A couple of weeks from now, and we'll have every ranch owner in this valley so walled out from stampedes and explosions, they'll sell at any price. <laughs> and who'd suspect us? <laughs> if I didn't think it worked, I wouldn't be here, would I, folks? Board? Yes. I'm Matt Clark, investigator for the railroad. Well, I'll have a seat, Mr. Clark. You're sure moving in fast. That dynamite was stolen only this morning. Dynamite? Well, isn't that what you hear about? No. The Tucson Express was held up east of Cochise on September the 9th. $20,000 in gold and banknotes were taken. Now, what's this about stolen dynamite? Four men took a couple dozen cases off the eastbound freight not more than a couple hours ago. You mean they stopped the train just to take the dynamite? Well, they didn't exactly stop her. She was already stopped, waiting in the siding for the Westbound Express. Uh, oh, Mr. Clark, I want you to meet my son and number one deputy, Bert. Pleasure. Same to you, mister. Mr. Clark's a railroad detective, son. In case you're thinking about that dynamite, you're wrong. Mr. Clark's here about that train robbery happened up at Cochise. I was wondering. For a minute, I thought you fellas begin to hear about robberies even before they happened. Crime detection may be getting more scientific all the time. We're not that good yet. Let's have a drink, Pop. Maybe our friend would like to wash out the Arizona dust. Sheriff, somebody blew up my barn and stampeded my horses. I want you to send a posse right away. Who did it? I don't know. I don't know. There was a man stopped by about three weeks ago, offered me 10000 from a ranch and stock. When I told him it was worth at least twenty-five, he, he seemed to get mad. You don't think for a minute. Uh, do you know this man? Never seen him before or since. I've seen this scare off game before, but it's usually done with fire. Dynamite's something new. I'd like to see this spot where the dynamite was taken. Either one of you care to show me? Oh, right, Bertie will be glad to. <laughs> I'm getting a little too old for riding. Let me tell you, when that explosion went off, it's like to shook me right out of my skin. I'll check in at the hotel. You meet me there as soon as you get the rest of the information from this lady. All right, Clark. Sit down, Hattie. Come on, right in that chair. Now then, you tell me the whole story. My visit to Wilcox turned out to be full of surprises. The first one was that stolen dynamite. The second was the unexpected appearance of my partner. Margaret Jones was supposed to be in Bisbee working on the Cochise train robbery from another angle. Hi, Matt. Hi. How come? What are you doing here? I'm chaperoning a young lady, only she doesn't know it. She came in on the last train. Oh, from Bisbee? She brought a $50 bill into the First National for change. The serial number matches those missing in the Cochise holdup. Have you found out why she's here? I have the slightest idea. There she is now. She's a dance hall gal from Burry Gulch. Why, Matt, you're so right. How could you possibly have guessed that? I took a correspondence course in character reading once. Would you care to further your education with a closer study? Sorry, I'm riding out with the sheriff. Well, something hot? No, local stuff. Stolen dynamite. It'll give me a chance to get acquainted. I ought to be back this afternoon. Have the clerk to hold me a room, will you? Sure thing. I'll meet you back here this afternoon. Fine. 
I'm looking for Bert Alvord. He isn't in, but I'm his father. Can I help? His father. I don't know. Depends. He ever told you about me? Molly Brandon? I know, not that I recall. He never told you we was engaged? Well, this is the first I've heard of it. Uh, are you a local girl? No. I'm from Bisbee. I used to go to Bisbee a lot on business. Lately, I've been sending Bert. How well I know. I wish right now he'd stayed at home. Sit down, miss. No, thank you. I've been expecting that this would happen. Instead of settling down, he gets wilder every day. He'll settle down with me or else. Because I don't mean to go through with this all by my lonesome. Guess it wouldn't do any good to offer your money, would it? He's tried that already. This came in the mail with a nice long letter of sympathy. Only he ain't gonna kiss me goodbye with a couple hundred measly bucks. No, sir, not me. He's gonna pay with himself. Either he marries me, or I yell it to the whole town of Wilcox. Do you hear me? Yeah. I hear you. Well, what do you and him intend to do about it? I'll have a talk with him just as soon as he comes in. Where are you staying? At the hotel. You wait there until you hear from me. It better be today, because I've waited too long already. when you'd get back, but just got in. <laughs> I've been out investigating Hattie Matthews' ranch. <laughs> I just saw Molly. Molly? Where? Right on the main drag. What's she doing in town? How would I know? She's your girl. Was, not is. I bought out. Better... I bought out. Better go make sure you paid enough. Looked like she was coming from the hotel. that story before. All right. How much more money do you want? I don't want your money, Bert. I gave it all back to your father. Except what I needed to get here. You've seen Pop. You told him about us. I'm desperate, Bert. You've got to marry me. You've got to. Oh, you little tramp. Do you know what you've done by coming here? If that detective starts adding things up, Stay put and keep your mouth shut. If anything goes wrong, I'll kill you. 
kill you. <laughs> we were both anxious to learn the girl's connection between the sheriff and the Cochise train robbery. We started for the sheriff's office to find out. Sheriff. Hello, Mac. This is Miss Jones, another railroad detective. Pleased to meet you, Miss. She came in from Bisbee this morning, picked up a suspect there. That Cochise robbery I was telling you about. I've heard of women detectives. First time I ever seen one. You say she followed someone here? Yes, a girl. As a matter of fact, I believe she was here in your office not too long ago. Come to think of it, she did say she was from Bisbee. You say she has some connection with that Cochise robbery? That's right. She's been spending money taking in a holdup. Would you know the mint numbers on them stolen bills? Yes, this is one of them. Sure. I'm positive. Where'd you get these? That girl. You know where she got them? Yeah. That dirty, rotten lion. She got them for my son. That's where she got him, for my son, Bert. If I had him here, I'd wring his filthy neck. And I don't feel sorry for me. I, I guess I saw it coming when I tried to close my eyes to it. Drinking, fooling around with dance hall women, cheating at cards, trying to tell myself he was just a little wild. Sowing his wild oats, they called it. Well, that's all over for him now. He's going where he won't do no harm to anybody. And I'm the one that's going to put him there. You know where he is? Yeah. Probably leaning up against some bar. We'll find him. What's wrong, Styles? You the railroad detective? Yeah, that's right. Now, Bert wants to see you right away. Me and him found that missing dynamite over at the warehouse. You and Bert have been sidekicks for a long time, haven't you, Styles? He even talked me into making you my deputy. The warehouse, huh? Kind of strange invitation coming right now, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Especially from one of my trusted deputies. What is this? I haven't done anything. Well, in that case, you won't mind waiting till we get back. Lock him up, Sheriff. Take this gun, miss. You'll find the keys on the desk. Better let me go in first. Anything you say. when you wouldn't come, Pop. Come on out of there, you dirty no good. Stand aside, Pop. I don't want to have to shoot you. I'm standing right where I am. Come on out. This is between Clark and me. Now get out. You better do as he says. You're right in his line of fire. I'll handle this, Matt. Much as I'm ashamed of it, you're still my son. I'm responsible for you, and I'm bringing you out. 
I warn you, Pop, I can't do any more. I'd just as soon die as go to the humor pen, and I'd sooner kill you than die. Get out, Pop, don't make me do it. It's all set. This will give us a couple of minutes. people here in a minute to help you with him. I'm going to have to burden before he gets out of town. Stiles, hoping for leniency, turned state's evidence. He implicated himself, Bert Alvord, and six other men in the Cochise train robbery. He told how Bert intended to parlay the loot into wealth and power by intimidating ranchers to sell it less than value.
On January the 8th, 1900, Al Borden Stiles were transferred from Wilcox to Tombstone for trial. No prison's gonna hold me for long. One of these days, I'll be getting out. And when I do, I'll get you if it takes me the rest of my life. Get in the wagon, you. Bert Alvord, Billy Stiles, and their gang were found guilty on counts of robbery and attempted murder. They paid for their crimes behind the bars of the Territorial Penitentiary at Yuma, Arizona. enjoyed this episode of Stories of the Century, starring Jim Davis and Mary Castle, and hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com and see hundreds of free television shows and western movies, and there's interviews with some of your favorite western stars. Come on by and see us, www.westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. Have a great day.